time does relaunch start? Very cool. Madonna. So what time does relaunch start? Uh, directly after Very lunch. cool. Twelve thirty five. Very cool. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. We just finished watching Run, Hide, Fight, which was actually surprisingly a good movie. I mean, that, that's a lot to ask for nowadays, but it's a 2020 action and I would dare say kind of thrillerish type of movie. And apparently because the Daily Wire is behind it and is also affiliated with this movie, the critics rated it 13%, which is so out of touch, as you can see that the vast majority of audiences rated it almost 100%. But I don't like Rotten Tomato because Rotten Tomato, they kind of tainted my trust with them because of what happened with the Marvel scene. So let's take a look at something else. How interesting, again, the freaking, <laughs> The critics are like, it's awful. <laughs> and uh, everybody else is like, wow, it's very good. Seemingly there's a disconnect here. The main reason why I think, and honestly, like there's no real reason reading through some of these reviews. And I'm going to give you mine. I don't care if a conservative made it. I don't care if a liberal made it. If a film is good, it's just good. There are a lot of films out there that people on the left political spectrum, sorry, have made that are really, really, really good. And there are people on the right that have really good movies and there's bad on both sides. I don't think a movie or a movie's merit should be determined based on the political affiliation of the person who made it so this to me I don't believe what they're saying because it seems very vindictive because as far as I can gather because Ben Shapiro was talking about it and Ben, ben Shapiro is a conservative YouTuber I think he's into politics too um I mean everyone knows Ben Shapiro but I'm not really sure what his actual title is it doesn't seem like he's a news person he just seems like the person that nobody dare debate because he comes with his stuff and I find it very entertaining to watch him do that. Uh, he's a very good debater. I don't agree with every single one of his beliefs, of course, but whatever, everyone's entitled to their opinions. And he was talking about this movie and I wonder if he had not talked about it and kind of covered up the fact that this was by the Daily Wire, if their reviews would have been different. And this is, I know this is, this is weird that I'm talking about this segment of it, but it needs to be talked about because this is disingenuous. This is disingenuous. This is something that was apart from Hollywood and Hollywood's like, no, it's awful. And I feel like it's a bit of discrimination in my opinion. I mean, read any of these reviews, how they're like, it's like they're trying to find things wrong with it, but they're trying to make it in such a way that's like, yeah, it's horrible, even though it has strong actors and, and you know, the plot, but look at what they did here, which is funny because the same things that they're criticizing this movie for doing, they praise other movies in their reviews for doing the same thing, you know, very, very odd. Very odd indeed. Oh my God, these these people and their agendas, you could see it. Like there is no hiding it anymore. So hilarious how obviously discriminatory they are. So unlike them, I am going to actually come at this from an angle of was this movie good or not? I honestly thought it was going to be like, oh, it's going to be stupid. In my first, my first thing is I was like, hmm, a bunch of Christians made it. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I know it, it sounds stupid. There are people I'm sure that are Christian that made good movies, but I grew up around Christian organizations that are apart from um, Hollywood or grew up watching movies by Christian organizations that were apart from Hollywood and their movies suck. Like the Left Behind series and all those other, oh my God, they use the same guy in all of them. <laughs> it's just like, damn, it's so cringy. But I was expecting that to happen in this movie and I was actually surprised that the movie was actually good. I went into it thinking it was gonna suck. I was willing to support something because honestly, I do admit, and it's very hard for people to fight this unless you're a hive-minded person who's just living under a rock and you have no idea what's going on around you. But a lot of the big name studios, Hollywood, the big tech platforms, they have become very powerful. So everything has become monotonous. They don't have to try. They've become a chain where everyone's just gonna buy their stuff because they're all that there is. But you notice a lot of the best movies I've seen as of late are from indie developers or indie studios. So let's see what's going on. The one thing this movie gets right is, first of all, the acting by the main character is actually pretty decent. This, the way they set things up, the tension of everything, the tension is done really well. And nobody can't say anything because it has diversity through the roof. 
Like, of course, they would find one thing to say about this movie, and I'm pretty sure this person accounted for that. But it starts off with you wondering what the hell is going on with this person. It's clouded and shrouded in mystery. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Final Destination right before things are happening. Like, you always feel like something's about to happen. Like, that little inkling of death's prickly, hairy finger is about to touch your neck, and then you're like, oh, whew. Huh, it wasn't what I thought it was, I guess, before the real shit hits the fan. <laughs> I will criticize is <laughs> girl on the left what the fuck are you doing like I know they're supposed to be reacting the people right by the door that before the van drove in I was like okay they're moving out of the way but this bitch is like okay a van is coming through or I see everybody else moving so let me just put my head down on just look at how this happens this girl right here, take a look at her when everything is going down. Just watch her the entire time before this van comes through the window. It's not a window, it's a door! Oh, you just can't let things go, can you? What the hell? That was so badly acted. She never once even looks up. Why did you get that girl? Like, she never once once looks up to say, what the hell is that? Oh, shit. And, like, if you saw a van coming, why would you... Why would you lie down on the... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, she killed... She ruined the entire scene. Let's look at that again, because it's freaking hilarious. Okay, even the guy that's at the same table, he looks over, at least he looked up. At least he looked up, but it's still stupid. You see a van coming towards you. Instinctively, everybody is gonna run away. What are you ducking from? You idiots! If the van had driven inside the school and decided to turn and keep going, you both would have been dead. Natural selection much, my guy? God damn, man. They should have done a better job with that. Jesus Christ. Aside from that, the acting is pretty much okay with people being scared. There's some people that they do put to the forefront and the tension when he, you think that the people are going to shoot someone else. It's like, okay, I actually believe it. They did a good job in this movie with this Joker-esque kind of villain in letting you feel the tension of what it must be like to have these people come into a school and do this. The movie was an interesting ride, and it wasn't perfect, but they got the tension part down, they got the thrilling part down, it was really entertaining. And this guy who played the villain, I really like him. We were trying to figure out who he reminded us of, and he's a little bit of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, uh, with, as my partner puts it, the guys from Scream, the first Scream movie, the two guys, he kind of is drawing on all of those characters. I like that the girl has a weakness and she's trying to battle and deal with certain things from the beginning. I like that during the whole ordeal is she's still trying to save people. We've seen a lot of movies do this over and over and over again. It's not like it's a new genre or this movie came up with anything differently, but I did like their rendition of it. I think they, they handled it very well. I was entertained. I was actually so immersed in what was going on that when the dogs were like, we gotta pee, we gotta pee, we gotta pee, I'm like, All right! It was so annoying with all the freaking distractions I had to deal with while watching this because it was that good. There are other movies I've watched as of late, Hollywood movies, mind you, that I can't wait for a distraction. I actually have to watch it in segments because it's so unwatchable. But this, I expected also for there to be some kind of messaging in it, but there really wasn't. I was waiting for there to be. I was like, okay, all right, what message are they going to push now? Or, you know, maybe I wouldn't even mind because you hear so much of one type of messaging. It would be interesting to hear another perspective but I just want to watch a movie. I don't want it to be used as some kind of messaging. But there wasn't really any messaging here. I mean, the only message here is to learn to let go and to fight for what is right, to fight for everyone else, and to know how not to be a hero. Even though the girl was doing that most of this movie, I was expecting that she was going to run up on those guys and do the whole freaking Jason Statham bit, and I was ready to just cringe so hard. But she didn't do that. The whole fighting part was she was going to the rest of the campus and trying to get people out of the school. That was noble. I did enjoy that. That was brave and that was awesome. And they didn't make it cringe. The movie was great. I really did enjoy it. There was nothing wrong with it. I don't know what people are bitching about. Honest to God, I don't know. 
It kind of feels like the whole Columbine situation. And it is good for people to see this movie. And dare I say it, this is the type of movie that should be in theaters. This is one of the movies that should start off 2021 in theaters. And I am so glad that we're getting other companies and studios out there, aside from Hollywood, bringing us entertainment. I think that there needs to be more competition. Because there's this weird thing that happens. When conglomerates or when groups of powerful organizations get too huge, they get too powerful and they don't try anymore. Have you ever noticed that your favorite musicians, whenever they get to a certain size, all the songs that they put out are trash? That's because there's no passion in their music anymore. They still enjoy it, but there's no real passion. There's no suffering. They have everything they want, so they don't need to try. And of course, when you're the biggest and only bull in town, you will automatically have all the cows because you're going to be like, oh yeah, I got you all your milk. What are you going to do? Go get some other bull. Ain't no other bulls around, bitch. But you <laughs> notice when a bigger bull comes along, all of a sudden that bull is all affectionate and attentive to the female. Emails, and then wants to fight that other bull and prove his worth. So I would like that. I would like for there to be more competition with movies because this, this is actually done really, really well. I think they could have worked on some of the dialogue for some of like the grownups and stuff. I think some of the acting was a bit like, eh, with some of the characters. I think the strongest actors were the father, the main character, of course, and the villain guy, the main villain guy, the head honcho guy. The crazy villain, I liked him too, but he was not that great of an actor. You could tell. Like you watch Joaquin Phoenix play crazy and you never see other people playing crazy the same way again. I've seen this Tom Hanks looking dude before. Where have I seen him before? I don't know, but he's a good actor. Most of their people are decent actors. They're just not great. But you can see that there's a lot of potential there. But this guy, he's going places. I liked his performance. That's at our camp and Broken Bow. I've never seen a family so happy. It made me wish that I could have that someday. You absolutely can. Wow. I can have your cabin. <laughs> oh my God, I love that guy. Oh, he's a villain. He's an asshole, but I really loved his performance. He was great. Like whatever else you guys are going to make, make sure that you sign this guy up because he plays that role so freaking well. I would like to see what his full range of acting is. Anyways, that's just my really short review about it. I don't really even want to get too much into it because honestly, I want you guys to support these people. I want us to support alternative studios. That's why I like indie films. That's why I like studios like Amaletto and Crypt TV and all of those because whenever you have outside forces that are not just the same and not in this drivel you see all the time, you have this wonderful thing that happens. Creativity. Remember what that was like, Hollywood? No, they've forgotten. It's all about politics now. So we don't really want that in our movies. And yes, I know what people are going to say. You oh, politics, they're part of movies anyway. Yes, I understand that. We just don't want propaganda shoved down our throats. I don't care what side it's coming from. I want all the characters to have their own ideals, but I don't want the overwhelming film of every single one of the characters being this freaking nauseating, hive-minded, monotonous, culty thing. And you see a lot of that in movies. Now, uh, granted, it is a little bit more believable if you have places like California or those homogenous societies in terms of culture that believe all of the same things, but that's pretty boring after a while. It feels like everyone's the same and now we're dissociating humanness from individuality or rights and the beauty of being a person from individuality. And that stagnates creativity. It stagnates a culture and a society. I know, I know. <laughs> it's so off track from the movie, but there, there was a point behind this movie and that's what I'm also reporting on as well. So it was a good movie. Was it the greatest movie ever? Of course not. There's so many things this movie could improve upon, but it was a... <laughs> It was a lot better than a lot of Hollywood movies we've been seeing recently. People were just people. So I would go and check it out and give it some support. Not because it's backed by conservatives. No, no, no. No, the movie isn't a conservative movie. And Over tells you that seems to be very bitter and hateful. It's literally just a movie about these poor students having to deal with these evil people gunning them down and one brave girl chasing back into battle to help other people. It's actually very inspiring and I would like to be like that character. Obviously, the critics aren't doing themselves any favors. Critics, your, your bias is showing a little bit. I like how this person gave it a zero. This per person wrote a, wrote a review, wrote a review, wrote a review, and it's funny them saying that because honestly, I expected to see agenda in there too. I really expected that they were gonna be like, oh, pro-gun, you know, and, and, and I didn't get that from the movie at all. 
I really didn't. There's some people who don't like firearms. I get it. I don't know why you wouldn't like a weapon. It's like saying you don't like cars, but there are some people who are really touchy about that. Understandably. So you shouldn't have a movie shoving in your face that, yes, you must do this. For crying out loud, the villains were the ones with the firearms. This person is like, it doesn't save a film. The cinematography is good, but it doesn't save a film that is fundamentally poorly written and designed to appeal to an echo chamber. Your bias is showing too. Because if you really believe that the cinematography was good and that was the one good thing about it, why in the fuck did you give it a zero? That's a clear, this is one of the clear cases of, yeah, your bias is showing. You like the cinematography, but it's a 0%. Okay, buddy. This person who who wrote this review was like, the right-leading studio behind a drag hits. A okay, so because it's right-leading, it gets a zero. You see, this is what we have to stop doing. We have to stop with this freaking shit, man. It's so freaking annoying. Do you know how many movies are supported or made by left-leading people? And people don't say shit about it. People will argue and say, hey, I just just want to watch your movie you don't have to put a whole bunch of propaganda in there the movie would be good if you left all that shit out but they don't give you a zero percent they just might not watch it or they'll bitch about it but your other movies that you do where you don't do that where you do similar to what this is and just bring entertainment people like it they don't care that you're left leading but however because it's not hollywood and it's backed by someone just happens to be right leaning oh my god the world is over and these people are the devil it's amazing how elementary people are behaving. But that's what happens whenever you have somebody that dares to compete with Titan companies. Anyway, I thought the movie was very good. It was a good experience and maybe... I wouldn't be as impressed with it if Hollywood had been putting out great movies as of recently, but they have not been. I can say that it was definitely a better movie than Wonder Woman 84. It was a better movie than Monster Hunter, which I did enjoy, by the way. I did a review of that. You can go check it out. Like I said, there were some issues about it that I don't really like, like some of the acting and some of the dialogue, but it was pretty good. Pretty good. Really tense. Very entertaining. Will I go back and watch this movie over and over again? Um, I don't think it's that type of movie that I want to watch over and over again, but if it was running on TV or something and there was nothing else on, of course, I would sit down and watch it again. It's not one of those movies where I'd be like, oh my God, not this movie again. No, I don't feel that way. I would be like, oh word, this movie? I love that movie. That movie is actually pretty entertaining. Here, somebody else, watch this. This is a movie I would actually refer to somebody else to watch. These people are getting mad because a school shooting is a cliched action movie. Like, I don't know, 90% of your fucking action movies? Uh, I mean, the, the bias is just nauseating. Stop being a child and stop being jealous and envious and a movie is actually better than what Hollywood's been putting out for a while. If anyone's still here watching, what if I told you that Ben Shapiro and those didn't actually make this movie, it was somebody completely different. If it had come out the next day that it was actually Patty Jenkins who wrote and directed this movie or... Lulu Wang or Steven Spielberg. You're like, just kidding. It was actually this person who directed the movie. You just dissed his movie and gave it a zero. Would you still have the same opinion? If you didn't know it was backed by a right-leaning studio or people that just happened to have that belief, would you still rate it a zero? Fair question. Anyway, I don't know what the frick elephant is, but I enjoy Die Hard. And to me, it was a little more deep than that because of what was happening. But yeah, it is basically high school die hard. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulteori. You ask, we answer.